tired <laughs> <laughs> that's the D, &D spirit <laughs> that's, that's, that's the energy i'm bringing to the dm chair tonight the I'm energy we bring tired. to the function is and i'm tired <laughs> play this game yourself okay it's gonna be one of those dmless games tonight <laughs> uh, chats get the dice out right chat that would be lovely. I, I have no energy or love to give to players tonight. Uh, wow. Welcome. So just a um, normal game for you then. It's just a normal game for me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone's getting disadvantaged for that. Um, Yippee! I'm, I'm already a friend. bloody wear rat, it's okay? I get Johnny much worse. Being mean to me. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, welcome along. Uh, I <laughs> this, is, this is D8 Dungeon, and you are watching Random DMs. Our, uh, our, how do we how do we describe random DMs? It's, uh... I mean, do we have just a prompt like in the chat for it? If I do exclamation mark random, will it describe it for us? I hope not. <laughs> I hope I, 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 and I hope that's not going to do. Either. We're going to we're, we're going to find out. Um, <laughs> random DMs is our uh, fortnightly show where every uh, every session we are playing a modular adventure from. Uh, for D and D five E, and uh, the catch being every session a different DM sits in the DM's chair. So five players, five DMs, one story told five different unique ways. Uh, and tonight, uh, you find me in the DM's chair. Uh, I uh, we are down Ralph this evening. They were meant to uh, DM to tonight tonight's session, but are unable to make it. Uh, Ralph, you are missed. We will see you in two weeks' time for the next one. And uh, no doubt you will have plenty of mischief and mayhem to bring in the form of Gideon. Uh, but before we dive into tonight's session, uh, a couple of quick things at the top of the, the show. Uh, you are watching G8 Dungeon. Uh, we are a group of tabletop role-playing gamers, predominantly from Ireland, but we have friends and players from all over the world who come together to help tell stories, uh, spread a little bit of joy uh, in... Uh, really really dive into the heart of tabletop role-playing games and uh share them with audiences uh, all over the world uh, if you'd like to know more about who we are if you uh, if you aren't already following us on social media uh, you can check us out at d8 dungeon uh, on all kind of the major platforms uh there's a link to our discord channel uh, in chat now. <laughs> listen we're all tired here <laughs> we're tired cats tired Mubot tired <laughs> sorry oh. the Mubot's having a time yeah. uh, there's, a link, there's a link to our discord server uh just there uh, and, and and actually <clears throat> on that um we are organizing our annual uh uh, D8 Dungeon Jim Jam Flim Flam Xmas Gift Exchange, uh, which is uh, an annual Kris Kringle Secret Santa gift exchange, whatever you, whatever you know it as, whatever you call it as. Uh, our Discord runs one uh, where members from all over the world get together and send each other uh, a small token uh, as a little bit of holiday cheer. Um, if that sounds like your cup of tea, if you want to get involved, you want to get a present from somebody, you want to send a present to somebody. Uh, we also, over the holidays, organize a um a kind of a get together where we open those gifts we play some games and we just kind of hang out over the xmas holidays so you are more than welcome to get involved with that over on our server if you would like to 
if you want to get involved in any D8 Dungeon uh, future productions or shows or any of our charity streams, the Discord server is the best space to be. That's where we announce everything first and foremost. Uh, we have uh, currently all our productions are cast, but there's talk of some last minute Christmas hijinks uh, in the form of a potential charity stream uh, that I can or will not go into right now because nothing is 100% confirmed. Uh, but <laughs> if you want to play some games for charity and you want to raise money for some great causes, that's the space to be at. Uh, that's where you'll see it first. Uh, okay. Enough uh, of the, the usual stuff. Um, Emma, Dahi, and Nikki, are y'all up for some random nonsense this evening? Yeah. Because uh, there's no mechanic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Listen, we, we've committed to it now. Look, look, look. Just throw the D&D &D movie on, right? Just throw the D&D &D movie on. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. That would be so funny. Put on the um, new season of Arcane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder if they'll play Hot to Go. No, this is random DMs. <laughs> this is Dragons of Ice Fire Peak. The oh, Dragons of Ice Fire Peak. O T T. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I can I can get that on. <laughs> no, 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 that's copyrighted. You can't put that on. Oh, <laughs> uh, Emma found out how to embed sound sources into Discord last night, and no. was constantly bombarding me with the Game of Thrones theme song. And the way down screen. <laughs> and yes. yes, yes and that, <laughs> oh, is real. that on the little the little button thing? Yes. Oh, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that thing. You can upload like your own sounds it's very stupid yeah, well, it was yeah. it was great like it was great i left that one and a half hour meeting in great form uh, <laughs> really inspired to get back into this uh, <laughs> okay we pick up uh at the bard's quill tavern uh gideon laid down uh some real truth uh and then that was quickly followed by Fung's um, explicit, intricate uh, recalling of uh, some close shaves, uh, some held breaths, and a deadly encounter with Cryobane, <laughs> narrowly escaping. Uh, the group find themselves just sort of reflecting on that night uh trapped uh in the uh, trapped underground uh in the earthen bowels of a hillock uh there pressed against dirt rocks sticking into back and legs poking and prodding uh little room and little air it the night passed slowly for a couple of hours the sounds of a dragon on a rampage scoring scratching uh, at the earth uh, filled the air until there was just silence. The thunderous boom of wings as the petulant, terrifying cryovane vanished into the night sky with a screeching roar. And it's that thing in the tavern as the five of us, Oster, Maka, Deceit, Fung, and Gideon, all sat round a a wide round table half filled drinks crusts of bread and empty bowls of uh oxen bow soup oster uh kind of shakes it off a little bit uh the the recollection of that night the events the encounter with the dragon and the change that it brought in him that adventuring isn't adventuring can be fun but it's not uh, it's not a hobby. It is serious. It is lives are at stake. There was that turning point for the young Ganassi. He, you see him kind of fetch a couple of the bowls, stacking them all up, uh, rounding up some of the empty carafes and uh, bottles and uh, mugs, uh, heading into the kitchen. He disappears upstairs and a silence has kind of fallen over the bard's quill. It, and, and it's not that it's uncomfortable. It's just there was there is tension there. It was that that particular moment that that night trapped underground, not knowing, kind of bubbles up for everybody. Um, 
while Oster is upstairs rummaging, what's going through everybody's mind in that moment? Uh, we'll start with Deceit. I think Deceit is like uncharacteristically like like not talkative like they're uncharacteristically like quiet because they're just thinking about like how close Oster was to being killed in that moment um like when we fought when we had our little tiff with the dragon they're still kind of like rumbling over that and like it it, it was it was a moment where they almost died too um mm. and they had their little sort of moment where they tricked the dragon and f fell and whatever they're just kind of like replaying it over in their mind and i think like they're probably not yeah they're just not super chatty right now they're just kind of like thinking about it and it is kind of upsetting them uh to mm. kind of really like re-reflect on that uh maka um I wasn't here last session, so I'm less concerned about the near-death experience, but... Um... <laughs> oh, you completely missed it. <laughs> oh, yes, sorry. We have to catch you up. You're actually, you're not hiding in the hillock. Um, we're expecting you to dig us out. You had... You oh, yeah. Had, yeah. Okay. Uh, you hid elsewhere. When Cryovane happened, uh, you hid. Uh, I was being interrogated, um, and uh, the others kind of came to my rescue. And we're... we're uh, yeah so yeah so can i but i know where you guys are right and i know you're buried yes. under yeah. something so i need to try get you out yeah yeah okay yeah but we're currently in the bar are we, wait are we underground right now yes are so we... we're still in the hillock yeah now okay we're in the past <clears throat> sorry we're thinking about the past and that night so it's like what okay. was going what's going through your head as you reflect on that moment Oh, yes. Cool. cool. So Maka is remembering how she was the hero that saved the party. Um, so definitely just really a sense of self pride, which she doesn't often feel, but just a complete real, you know, that if somebody asks what was the proudest moment of your life, this would be in the top 15. Um, so yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that's what mac is feeling as she's remembering sort of the the scramble to 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 dig um and kind of dig like she's she is a a herringan so like like a rabbit you know like two front paws digging um and the back legs kind of scrapping the mud back as she really is uh, you know just fighting with all her energy to to, to get the party out yeah and fung oh uh fung does not read the morose atmosphere like to her this was a point of pride for her to recite this confrontation with the dragon yeah so she's yeah so she's a bit elated she's like not say chatting with others she's just silent like yeah that was a pretty awesome day <laughs> kind of, kind of <laughs> yeah, it died it was dope <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it is that thing uh, as uh, as you think back on it, as you kind of drift back into the the memory of it, um, uh, Fung just having recounted it and recounted it well, like 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 the great orators of ancient times. This is the tale that uh, you boastfully shared with nary a detail omitted, uh, no embellishment except for Maka. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> No, very <laughs> an important detail. <laughs> uh, you uh, you are in that sort of it's like overcome with kind of pride. And even thinking about the situation, what had happened, like that 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 whole kind of getting everybody uh, on side and getting everybody kind of sorted and safe. There, yeah, there is a, pr a sense of pride that fills you. Uh, Maka, for you, it's the the resilience uh, in the face of it all. The um, despite the, uh, despite the, the the, uh, the 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 dragon, despite the the terror and the uh, the fright uh, that had kind of crept over you, uh, in the face of that, you stood up and you single handedly 
unburied the group from their uh, hiding place. Um, You're welcome. And you do like it, it's a, you catch both both Fung and uh, Maka catch each other's eye. And there is that sort of that nod, and you're both nodding and smiling at each other, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> both, of, both of you feeling yourselves to be the hero of the of of that moment of that <laughs> escapade, uh, and as uh, as you sit there, like deceit, uh, kind of. Have we lost? Uh, we have. Like... Yeah, they just popped in chat that their internet frozen. They'll be back in two okay. seconds. Okay, uh, but it is that thing as you are. Uh, as you are kind of uh, kind of looking at each other, you both kind of you're like in the in between us. Uh, deceit would have been set there, and you do see that they are just they're just kind of like it's just they have like they have a finger in like their drink, and they're just kind of half stirring it a little bit. They're kind of lost in that moment too, um, but there's no real emotion. There's no real response, and the silence is broken a couple of minutes later. Um, mid recounting, like Oster seems to have kind of lost himself. Uh, he kind of half stumbles down that narrow staircase that leads up to the rooms, and you see that he has he's carrying it in, in his arms, uh, this heavy trunk that's already open. And uh, you can see bits of scarves, you can see uh, some paper poking out of it, you can hear the jostling of things inside it. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and when uh, you, know, you obviously. When Maka dug us out, um, we made our way back to Fandolin. And you, 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 you remember what Fandolin was like. It was, I mean, Cryovain was pissed. Like he, he took all those villagers. Uh, his goons had rushed the, the, the space. So many of the the homes were covered in frost and snow and ice. And 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 I, I just, it was, it was, it, it was just went from bad to worse and in that he drops the trunk on the 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 table and he starts rummaging through it like i i just i really i i i kind of I'm, i draw a blank at a lot of this but i do remember and he's he's ruffling through uh you can hear him kind of flicking through stacks of paper and he takes out a heavy book and he drops it to one side um and on it, you clearly see um, the Strad saga. Um, and he just kind of leaves it off. He pushes that to one side. And then <laughs> uh, he kind of he keeps going through it. And then he takes out this stack of paper and he puts it's It's, it's in here somewhere. I, I, I know I have it. I, I remember uh, making it. And... As he as he goes to pull a sheet out, the door to the bard's quill bursts open, and there you just hear a new, a new, a new. If you're from NU, give me a roar. And there's just like wow uh, from like <coughs> this crowd of frat boys, uh, uh, and sorority uh, sisters who just swarm into it uh they're dressed in never winter university colors um <laughs> faces have been painted a f there's a few bloody noses a black eye one of them is swinging a um a, a giant trophy over their head uh and it's like barkeep yo my man and they just kind of point at the table Five bar keeps, yo, my dudes, uh, drinkies, uh, and the again about thirty of these students just spill into the tavern, and Oster kind of looks up, kind of at them. Uh, 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 oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry, uh, customers, and he he kind of puts the papers down and he goes to the. He goes behind the bar. The seat starts preparing a very, very high level shatter and then just lets it dissipate. And it's like, <laughs> no, maybe not. Um, and just kind of like, I always forget that this place is actually like a bar. Like a, it's actually a place where people come and have drinks. Um, hmm. uh, as you turn, 
yeah it's just as you kind of as you as you kind of it's that thing of like oh yeah actually this isn't this isn't our hangout this is this yeah, is actually this a, isn't our house. Tavern, this is Oster's business um uh exactly. you kind of turned like oh sh should we help should i conjure an unseen servant or a mage hand uh, oh i already it, i already am <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's kind of it just flits away and it gets you a drink instinctively. It just comes back and it brings you a drink and it puts it down. So well trained. Now go do that for other people. <laughs> for money, make sure to get payment this time. Uh, the well manicured mage hand just gives you sort of a thumbs up, uh, and then flits back and like is like now taking drinks from Oster and he's trying to pour uh, kind oh, of yeah. pints and half pints for these people. And as you kind of turn back, just now leaning across the table his gut kind of like hanging out from a uh, uh like a t-shirt that's a little too small for him and you see there's like a number emblazoned on it and like uh, like again never went to university across the top of it in bold letters just this very kind of like drunk looking minotaur uh young man kind of i'd say early 20s and he's just kind of fixing and he is he's leaned across the table and he's deadpan on you uh to see like he's staring at me or he's yeah. fallen on me no he's staring oh. at you and he's kind of got a smile on his face can i help you do you need uh, an autograph or something uh are you enchanted some have told me because <laughs> every time i look at you i get all kinds of weird magical feelings <laughs> mostly in my pants and he raises an eyebrow at you well that's I'm, I'm not going to say that's the first time I've heard that but um, you know why don't you and I'm going to start like just like talking at him like just you know kind of just chatting uh, and I'm going to use my <laughs> what's it called <laughs> uh, the scene is not in the mood for this like really uh any around any of them that are around me i'm going to try to use enthralling performance to catch like a bunch of them to have them charmed by me okay and then get them to go away <laughs> uh, we're just gonna say it happens i'm not gonna make you roll for it like yeah. there it is that i'm just I, I feel like he does entertain the the flirtatious remark but to see or they do they do entertain it they're like oh i'm chatting of course yes i am i mean look how about i just get you and a few of your buddies a little autograph and you go off and enjoy your drinks and they're just like signing like a, a poster that they just produced of <laughs> themselves uh of their one person play uh and they've signed five of them because of course they produced just suddenly produced five immaculate posters and just sign them on like, you go, you go, have fun, have fun, have a drink, have, uh, have a drink. They take, yeah, they take the, the poster and they kind of hold it up their head and like, I got one! Um, <sighs> and then uh, he kind of turns around and as he kind of gets up from the table, his eyes lock on you, uh, Maka. Yeah, Maka's right. just been there, sitting there going, and you, and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, woo, and you, are you enchanted? Because every time <laughs> I, sex take I get all kinds of weird magical feelings. <laughs> See, starts <laughs> casting <laughs> chatter again. No I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> and he just gives you like he kind of he goes to wink at you, but he just blinks with both his eyes at you instead. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna gently rest her hand on his like forearm and just say, uh, "I'll have a white wine, please." Ooh, Sparky. <laughs> a white wine for the enchanted pants lady. <laughs> <laughs> he's, now, like, he's, he's now falling asleep on your arm. Okay. Oh my god! She's got to she's got to slide out from under him and then yeah, turn around to the seat and be like, "Oh, I miss being young." Uh, I mean, yes, you would. I still, I would know how that feels. Well. <laughs> It's that thing as the two of you are like, oh god, are, there's four young men and women that have uh, approached Fung. Um, but then it's that thing of like, you know, you, you, you ask them, you ask them, you ask them. You know, you know. Uh, and then, so they're they're trying to work up the guts. I'm going to roll for them, actually. Um, <laughs> what's your uh, charisma modifier, uh, Fung? Uh, two. 
Okay, so I'm going to take two off this roll because that's your intimidation. Uh, your presence is intimidating. <laughs> if I can, can, yeah. can if deceit notices like this, like them kind of like going, oh, you you ask, you ask. If I can throw at the most meek looking of them, if I can throw a wee bardic at them, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and what's your bardic? It's a d6. Okay. So, oh, well, I mean, it's a d6 when we're in the past, but, you know, I, okay. I'm assuming we're going by those statistics. Well, yeah, we'll go with that for just for the sake of it. Uh, it doesn't help. It brings it from an eight to a nine. Uh, <laughs> as they're all they're all just way too intimidated to ask. Uh, as, as someone, I just look over at them and they all just scatter. Just like, yeah, it's like they all look down. They're all at me, like looking down. Like, and they all flush. <laughs> all four of them flush. Uh, and then it's like, move, move, move. And they all are there. They're trying to get back into the crowd. Uh, at this point, you just hear Oster saying, so, you know, the plan, right? You you remember when we got back to Fandlin, they'd captured the villagers. Uh, Cryovane mm -hmm. was looking for treasure in return. And I think I blacked out. I, I think I remember, remember, remember the whole, the vision. And I saw the sword in the hill. And I saw the big tower of light with all the treasure. I and like at that moment, then like again, there is just a treasure, treasure, treasure. Uh, <laughs> treasure. <laughs> I'm going to use thaumaturgy to make the treasure sound like be louder. So we're like treasure, treasure, treasure the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Oster is like, I, I can't. I, 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 it's in, it's in the plan, and he's pointing at the stack of paper. Oh, and deceit as you kind of like, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, his his little doodles and his maps and stuff. Uh, uh, with kind of the aid of Maka, who kind of next to you, you kind of rifle through it, and you do, uh, you pull out this. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a scroll. It's a. And it looks like a map slash plan. And Emma, if we could cut to Oster's map. Oh, is yep. that the one that you that's posted done. in the chat? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's <laughs> uh, let it not be said that D8 Dungeon Games do not use uh, maps. <laughs> uh, I'll have you know we use the finest of maps around and here. And as you're about to see, the figures are just little Hello Kitties. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the minis. <laughs> yeah. It's this really faded scroll. Uh, you clearly see uh, ring marks from uh, coffee or beer, wine spilled on it. Uh, there's crude, uh, a crude drawing of a mountain range and a, a dragon breathing icy breath uh, down from a castle. There are some rolling hills and on it there seems to be kind of a sword stuck uh, into the hills. There's the there's a little village with a very scenic tree and a happy looking bee uh, that's meant to represent Fandolin, if you remember. And off to the edge of the map, you do see a tall tower that looks a little like a lighthouse. And you do, it's that thing of, as you look at the plan, you're like, oh, oh yeah, we were, we were left to come up with something because Oster blacked out and as he did, there were, he spoke of flashes of spaces, these powerful relics, these ancient treasures that could be used to maybe bribe uh, Cryovane, or a sword that could be used to slay the dragon, uh, a fabled legendary sword. And as he is uh, escorted inside uh, the inn, and Gideon promises to stay next to his side and not <laughs> collect samples of his DNA. Uh, <laughs> the three of you stand outside. You see, again, you are, we are rushed back to the past. It's almost like you're pulled into the ex exquisite details of Oster's map. Um, and you find yourself standing outside the Stone Hill Tavern. And it is that thing of well, are are we are we going for, are we going to try and find out what this tower of light is, or are we going to find this ancient sword in the hills? Can we find out more about mm. these things and what they could possibly mean? So I assume we're like walking and talking as soon as we we're, we're heading yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll say as we cut back, the first thing that felt it is clearly we should go after the sword. The sword is probably what we need to slay a dragon. I think you're correct. I think you're so right. But of I course don't I am. I, well, we'll get back to that. But <laughs> I think that's a good idea. But I do think we should keep in mind where that location of that tower is for after we kill the dragon. Because, I mean, this job is paying, but it's not really paying enough. I didn't come here to just kill a dragon and get paid in a whatever amount. I want to get paid, paid. So kill the dragon, collect the treasure. Cure the curse. Cure the curse. I think we should cure the curse first. <laughs> um, you know what I always say? Walk into the town curse first. Curse I would like curse. to not do that. If that's good. I would um, recommend against it. Your affliction. Your affliction is a boon against us. It makes you invulnerable to conventional means of damage. It will oh, maybe I should bite you dragon. too. Oh, I forgot about your wear rat curse. <laughs> I'm talking about... Word. I'm talking about the Black Spider's curse um, and the fact that we were de-leveled by his curse. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Curse the yeah, I actually completely first. forgot about that as well. To be fair, that's only something that affects me and Oster. Um, yes, that is. I don't know how we break that only... curse. Uh, we'll we have to kill a dragon. That bridge when we get there. We'll kill the dragon. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> when we kill... Listen, I'm not listening to all of what's going on. I'm listening to what's going on directly and right for me. now. <laughs> for me. So for me, sword, kill dragon, get treasure. Profit? Question mark? Where where does the curse fit in? Oh, you don't really have to worry about the curse. Uh, all of the curses are kind of on me right now. Great. <laughs> You can see, I knew you wouldn't care. I knew you'd be. I knew. I knew I could assuage your fears by telling you that it's just about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my story. <laughs> just the curses, nothing. Everything else is us. Um, I was thinking though, and like as they're walking and talking towards wherever the sword is, because I'm assuming is that what we've decided on the sword. But this yeah. needs to be walking I mean, towards what whatever way the sword is anyway, because that's what they've decided. On. You you've no idea where the sword is. All Oster said was it's in the hills, but oh. Vandalin he he then passed out. Um, I mean, so he couldn't have given us more direction. I mean, he did get touched by a div divination god. Goodness, this might be your or time. This might be your moment to shine. You with your silver tongue, go gather information. Oh, you know, you can get everywhere with flattery, and I'll disguise self. <laughs> Turn into Oster, because oh. people will talk to Oster. People, Oster is very approachable, and people of Madeline like him a lot. So I will disguise myself as Oster. Let me just, um, uh, let me get, like, this is deceit as Oster, as deceit. So for a moment, it's just like, let me get into character, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> Ba, ba, ba. <clears throat> Golly gee, I love adventuring. Does that sound right? That sounds spot on. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go find it. Sorry. <clears throat> Let's go, friends. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to march. Wait. And then, uh, like, halfway down the road, turns around and is in full deceit, like, foppishness. It's just like, Wait, is everybody here like dead and kidnapped? Not everybody. So like a handful of villagers have been snapped. Uh, okay, snapped perfect, up. Perfect, perfect. But there is a um, there are there are people around, kind of like panicking and trying to make trying to trying to clear the roads of the frost and the snow. Good, 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 good to know. Good to know. I let's. Let's go find someone that needs our help. Well, you do. You would know, uh, Deceit, having been here before, that there there are yes. kind of a couple of uh, big names in the, Ooh, the town. Yes, we uh, can talk to the guy, the lady who owned that mine. She knows a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. So you have. Uh, you also have Harvin uh, Wester, the town, uh, the town master. 
um, and he's kind of in the middle of the town. Uh, he would know kind of quite <gasps> he... a bit about the space. Uh, is he the one who also owes us money for the mine thing, the mine job? Yes, he would do. Somebody else is going to have to ask for the money because if I ask for the money as Oster, he won't believe me. I'll ask. Um, Oscar, do, uh, oh, you'll have to, not Oscar, Oster, you'll have to also contend with me saying things like, well, I'm just glad we could help out instead of, you know, I'll try and argue against taking the money. Mm -hmm. um, but I need you to fight me on that because I want the money as me, but as Oster, I'm pretending that I don't want the money. If you get, you, 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 get the money. Don't listen to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love, I love it. I love it. Save okay. the day again, I'm... Waka. <laughs> <laughs> Your sixteenth proudest moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As I'm gonna like jaunt my way in, and be, I look very concerned. Also, um, yeah, Harbin, Harbin. There's already kind of a, a lot of people in the the town masters hall, um, and. Uh, like, it's normally shut at this hour of the evening. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, this is early in the morning because we, we got out. So like, it, it's it's normally shut this hour of the day because he's Harvin and he hates doing his job. Um, but there are there's a score of like uh, Fandolin residents, um, outlying farmers who've kind of come in and are, and are like giving details of their loved ones who were captured by Cryovane's goons. Uh, crops have been frozen over. Uh, what are people mm -hmm. going to do? How are we going to deal with the dragon? Uh, and on seeing the three of you, and I went, well, uh, well, 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 uh, well, uh, you, whoa, uh, 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 Fandolin's hero, uh, uh, Oster, Oster Curie, uh, uh, everybody, uh, and his and his friends. Uh, well, the... Jimmy Jillikers, I'm so glad to see everyone's right as rain. See, it's Oster, everybody. <laughs> 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 I am, however, just I will be using my actor feet to sound exactly like Oscar to like mimic his voice mm. at least. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll I'll rush in. And I'll be like, well, Harbin, you know we're here to save the day. Um, also, we helped out at the mines, and I look at Maka expectantly. Yes, we completed our job at the mines. Isn't that great news? Uh, 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 yes, uh, of course, and uh, your reward for that, uh, I... Oh, uh, we're, I, just, I, we're just so happy to help out the community. Like, maybe we shouldn't take a reward off these people in this in uh, time we, of need. We, we put a, we, like, you know what, time is money, and we put a lot of time into this, and I think we were promised a reward, and we won't take any more than you said you would give us. Um, no, don't tip, not even a standard 10%. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, we've lost Declan. <laughs> I feel like Declan heard that was just like, actually, I'm out. No. <laughs> He's got too tired for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, imagine, we get a reward plus 20% tip. You know what? I've decided... As as a D and D player now, anytime I complete a quest that has a monetary reward, I'm going to ask for a tip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to level with you all. My connection oh, no, our, dropped. When will our DM yes. return? Yeah. So my connection. My Find connection. out next episode of Dragon Ball Z Kai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole whole connection. I lost it just as Maka had said. They wanted, uh, you know, that we should get paid for our their time. Yes, and I said that um, we should get paid just what you just what you said you would. There's no need to give the standard like even ten percent tip. We, oh, of we, course, we I just... will give you a hundred percent since the GM is not here. I whatever I say is now. <laughs> <laughs> Each I am of here. us get ten thousand platinum. Pieces. Can you hear Declan, Nikki? <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I think. Oh no, he's gone. He's just gone from. Yeah, he's. Oh no, he's gone. back for us. That's so spooky. He's gone from me now. Is he still there for you? Yeah, he's he's refreshing. I'd say. Oh, right. He's um, not here for hi. me. I did a hi did chat. A... Uh, we're having internet problems. Yeah. <laughs> I no, I did a refresh oh, okay, that time. Yeah, he's he's back. It would work. Okay. Yeah. See, Sorry. you were back for both me and Emma, but not Nikki. So Nikki thought you were not here. Oh, okay. So, so Nikki, can you see Declan now? Yeah. Okay, great. I am yeah, real. I just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, I, I thought I was. And just gave us ten thousand plans. <laughs> uh, yeah, Harbin kind of looks uh, looks to you, Maka, and is nodding very seriously, and then he turns to Oster. 
Oster, that's that's really kind of you. Uh, and I, and if I could, if I could level with you, and I know you you'll understand this. Of course. Given the current situation, uh, you are owed your reward, and I, I I will happily furnish you with an IOU. Uh, it, it's just we need supplies to keep the townsfolk fed and warm. Uh, like you can't see it because there's that veneer of disguised self, mm-hmm. but the seat's eye twitches. <laughs> the seat's just like, look, that's we're yeah. here to help the community. We're here to do what we need. And I turn very nearly <laughs> Maka, and I'm just like, we're here to help the community. It's just the this, I I. Do. I am all for this. So maybe we could take something as collateral. From... Of course. And Harbin kind of ducks down. And, uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I'll be with you in a moment. I, I just need to deal with uh, our heroes who are here to claim money in the middle of a town disaster. Uh, and he, he, you, he kind of opens a drawer and he pulls something out and he scratches on it and he hands you a official receipt uh, from the town of Fandolin, uh for the sum of what were we promised? Because I wasn't there. I think, it was for... like, I think it was like fifty gold or something. It's okay. in the. It should be in the the log. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's assume total of two hundred gold or something. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, I'm. 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 I'm no. Let's assume that. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's uh, a. It's a for a sum of money that is described somewhere in the quest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he does. He offers to uh, like it's that. It's the exact amount that was agreed upon. Not a not yeah. a copper piece more. Not a keep copper piece less uh, for it. He just. I I'm sorry. I I, I know. Um, and uh, you're such a great guy, and we really appreciate this. But you know, collateral is a big word, so maybe it's not something you fully understand. But what I meant was. Um, <laughs> You know, maybe we could take something of the same value, and then we'll return that to you once you have the cash. But this, this is this is worth the price it's printed on. This, this is from the township. This is effectively a bond. Oh, this is this is this this, this is a perfect reward. Thank you so much again. And look, we we would uh, we would we would always like to do what we can for the community, and we'll make sure that this is paid back in in kind. And I'm kind of like. To, like uh, this is deceit acting a little bit <laughs> it's just kind of like yeah township receipts are good i've had <laughs> this is fine okay <laughs> I, I can cash this kind of like a, a move <laughs> and marco will back it's off like, and then just like, i don't care if the town doesn't exist anymore i'm cashing <laughs> <laughs> and, and marco will turn back and just say thank you so yes this is yeah we, have, we can we, have, we, uh, we know we're struggling and you know, um, if we all work together during this crisis, you know, we'll we'll, we'll absolutely get through it. And and, and and golly gee, we're gonna help. And then uh, in that, like a, a little, a small little gnomon boy just kind of grabs Oster's like, like the the yoga pants, and like he kind of tugs him. And Mister Oster, are, are you gonna fight Cryovin and bring back my mommy and my granddad? I'm going to do all that and more. I promise you, young kid. The seat's just like, the, Oster would make a stupid promise like this, probably. Yes. Um, <laughs> like, if she's dead, we will bring back her body. I... So that you may have something to bury. <laughs> uh, her body full of joy and happiness as she's dancing back to see her lovely darling boy. And Oster will pick him up and like bring him over to like some caregiver. <laughs> oh, he, like, he, he is like, there's literally, it's just floods of tears and mm. snot and he's foaming at the mouth to see and he is just it's all on you like it's just it's fine nobody can see it yeah. i'm yeah. gonna disguise it it's fine yeah. it's okay Fun france why why is he crying i'm telling the truth the children of this land is weak they must be hardened <laughs> <laughs> all the all the children are crying at the idea of being taken care of by fung the seat oster has like moved the child over to some like adults to, to look after them and has come back and it's just like Fung, I think there are some um, people doing 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 great work to restore the town and the bits that have been uh, destroyed that definitely needed need to be commanded outside and told what to do. Uh, you're good at that. I will go, but not because you told me to. And then she will <laughs> goes out. <laughs> Just like I need, I was <laughs> to see. It's like I need her to stop making these children cry. <laughs> There's um, 
there's a moment where like it is like as the kind of the, as the kids start crying and parents are swooping them up uh harvin is taking like the, a list he's making a list of names and people are like i just I, like you hear kind of a lot of the, the villagers the farmers are like we just where are we going to get this money we, like, I, I, I just I, like, I don't know I, and then somebody mentions the shipwrecks off the coast that there were uh, a lot of ships went under in some pretty bad storms a couple of years ago. Nobody has dared to uh, plunder them. That they might have, they might have treasure on it. And then uh, somebody else goes, "But like, we, like but we don't, we're, we don't have the time, and we don't have the gear to do that." Uh, and then you hear uh, a, another woman kind of pip up, "But uh, what about Our Lady's sword? You know, the, the the dragon blade, like that. That we could find that in the hills. You know, that's." <clears throat> Uh, 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 golly yep. me I heard something about a sword that can help us valiant heroes vanquish a dragon oh uh, 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 Mr. Curie oh it's it's lovely and like this little old lady takes uh, your hand and like just uh, holds it and, oh may the gods bless you young man you've done so much already for Fandolin I, I just try to do my best for the good people of Fandolin and adventure. And I'm, I'm, I, I must say, I, I'm so glad that you finally rid yourself of that cretin that was hanging off of you. I knew you were going to fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oster, the Oster is smiling. Wolfie <laughs> is like, is like, fucking, you're such a fucking, <laughs> fucking <laughs> I was just like, yeah, um, yeah, they died tragically trying to save this village from the dragon. Actually, they they stopped it from taking uh, more people. So they're actually a hero in my heart and should be in yours. Oh, wow, that, that's very surprising. They yeah, always but a hero, like a two-faced hero. lurch. <laughs> I like it. They just... You know, they're, so, <laughs> they're so wonderful. And I, I was actually going to keep her hand. It's going to keep oh, her that's hand. A, that's a grip you have, Oscar. <laughs> that's a yeah. very good grip. You're hurting yeah, my you hand. Should, you should definitely build, when, when everything is done, you should you should build like a, a golly G statue to that person. They're so good and hard, kind-hearted. And they distracted the dragon, so they didn't take all of you. Especially <laughs> old women. Because that's what he was after. I... <laughs> I, I, I like our hand is now purple. Like our hand is purple. <laughs> um, and uh, she does like like everybody is kind of giving her a wide berth. It's like, oh, they're all they're all they're all too scared to go to the dragon's barrow. But I I I reckon a young whipper snapper like you, uh, now that you don't have that dead weight around your neck. Uh, <laughs> Deceit bites back a comment. Deceit, deceit bites back a comment about like her family be also being dead weight. And then now that they're gone, but it's just like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that one. There's a trickle of blood coming out from the corner of the room. Thump. Oster, like there's just a vein in his head thumping. <laughs> yeah, we're just. And you said something about a, a, a golly. You said something about a sword. Why don't you talk about that more? Where's that? Uh, uh, so uh, many, many uh, years ago, a, a century, about as old as your friend, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, may the gods rest their soul. Uh, Get to the fucking point. Uh, <laughs> go on. Um, sorry, keep going. Golly, uh, gee, uh, bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a great lady, a, a royal lady. Nothing like your friend. Uh, Just like you, a royal bitch lady. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. very kind. What was that? Oh, I said lady. It was in it was in uh, my language that I speak. Yeah, sorry, I'm a Janassi, so I speak this oh. it's a different language. Yeah. Lady Tanimir Alagandar. Uh, the name just... Uh, was that a stroke or her name? Sorry, I... Her, lady. her, her name... Like you must be unwell, Oster. You must, you must be Sorry, unwell. that's the language again. Um, let's let's keep going. Well, she killed. She killed a dragon, uh, and I I just think, well, she had this beautiful sword, and that's what she used to slay that toxic 
poisonous green dragon. Much like your dead friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her. <laughs> I'm going to kill her. <laughs> Declan, I can't wait to DM Mel. <laughs> I hope to God I DM Mex because I'm going to ruin your life. <laughs> Jack, Declan has spent far too much around on DM as playing a nice character. That this yes, I have, to, I have to. I have to. If, get if my you were tortured in season one, I the next session is going to just kill us. Um, it, yeah. So it like she goes on to explain about how uh, there was this uh, great battle uh, between uh, this uh, lady Alagander uh, who killed. She fought and killed this. Uh, green dragon that was terrorizing the high road um when she died um they buried her uh in a uh beneath a barrow like this 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 uh, hill um and it's no it was where she fought the green dragon it was such a revered site uh that uh her and her compatriots um were buried uh with her uh at this point as per her wishes um so the site where the dragon fell uh can be found to the north of Fandolin. it is some days away but harbin promises you horses um what what they have they will give you especially if you're doing this to aid Fandolin and slay cryovane um and is that the is that what we're doing are we are we heading to the dragon barrow yeah okay um, um, I'm just sorry. I was just having a look at my spells to see if I could cast anything on her on my way out. So I don't <laughs> think I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> uh, good bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe as I'm leaving, I'll like just throw like a message out, and I'll just I'll just say in because I've heard the dragon speak for quite a little time. I'm just gonna say in the dragon's voice, "I'm coming for you next." <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Um, just yeah, no, it, 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 she, she faints. Um, okay, good. Uh, like she does, she just collapses. Uh, again, people kind of swarm to aid her. Um, and it is, it is that thing, uh, that, uh, some of the, uh, vi villagers here at Fandlin, uh, with Fung's direction are ordered to fetch the best horses, the fastest horses, um, you are given kind of some very simple supply packs, what little they can spare, uh, some torches, some rations, uh, your, like some blankets, uh, but that's it. That's that's kind of all they really have to kind of give. Uh, you're pointed uh, in the direction of the high road north towards the, the dragon and barrow and the gravesite of Lady Alagondar. And it is it, it, it does take the better part of a day uh, going at full speed with the horses uh, to to get there, um, and with kind of with just a little, just a few hours rest, um, the following uh, mid morning, uh, there is there is a coldness that is blowing down from the mountains, uh, and the sky is this um, very dreary gray, and you can't can't help but feel the chill just kind of as a shiver runs down your back it feels like someone is watching you someone from a great distance has eyes fixed on the three of you and as you come round the road there in front of you uh you see this high hill um but the flat of it where there would be that kind of that crest is flattened uh, and jutting out from the top of this uh, snowy covered hilltop uh, there is just this row of uh, 10 foot tall rocks uh, that sort of arc along the hill uh, like a like the quills on a dragon's spine um, and yeah all right you make your way towards the uh you make your way towards the hill and that's that's 
kind of all you see. It it takes uh it takes a, a couple of minutes to kind of once the horses are tied off um to climb the the barrow itself. And it does from up here, it's a thing as you kind of look down, you do see like it's it's quite uh, it's quite a spectacle. The the rocks themselves, it does, it do, it looks like the it looks like the back, the spine of a dragon as the, the rocks fall back over the edge of the hill. Mm-hmm. What's everybody doing? Where is the body buried? That's a question like, we, that uh, we'd have to find out. Uh, based on the information, is, is she just buried? Is there like a tomb or like a thing? All, all you find up here, Fung, is just these rocks. Uh, there's, mm. there's no gravesite. Mm. There's no tomb. There's no shrine. There is just this flat-topped hill, uh, and uh, these, these rocks that jut out towards the sky. Mm. If she was buried, then would it not stand to reason that the patch of ground where she was buried in would have a more dense? flora around it due to the fertilization from her corpse i mean she could be buried in a box yeah she could be in within a rock you know surrounded by rocks we wouldn't see she that could before. also be magical and kept preserved mm, that's creepy yeah. she could also be still alive Ooh, spooky um i think we probably just have to do a little investigating, do a little bit of searching, get our sleuthing hats on. Give me, yeah. So those of you that are, if, if you're, if you're, if you're going to look around, um, mm-hmm. give me, uh, give me perception checks, <clears throat> just, to see, just to see what what you might notice. Uh, I rolled a two. So, it's an eleven from me. Fifteen. Uh, yeah, Fung, you're you're looking for well. No, clearly my flora theory is the correct theory. Uh, so you are <laughs> yep. you're looking for where the grass is a little bit more fertile looking, and it's like oh, it, it must be here. Oh no, it must be this part over here. Um, Double attacking big patches of flowers <laughs> or dirt. Yeah, uh, but for deceit and maca, it is like you are your eyes are drawn to the rocks, and like in the. <sighs> In the in the center of like what would be kind of the top the point of the hill the largest rock kind of sits and both as you kind of circle it uh, you catch it first to see and then maka like a, a second later there is underneath uh, this rock underneath the base of it where it's sitting you clearly see that is it is resting <laughs> over something this rock seems to be. Um, Sorry, we lost you there. Just what your mic, your, the rock seems to be what? Co- covering something. Oh. Um, can I try? Hmm. I want to attack the rock. Uh, okay. With, uh, maybe guiding bolt. Sure. Uh, make the attack roll. Uh, that's an 18 uh yeah 18 hits um and then damage is eight um in uh i, I can't believe i've had to google this um i have i have found the how answer much does a rock have? how much health does a rock have um and yeah it is that thing uh so the next one Welcome to D8 Dungeon, where we don't know how much HP a rock has. Because <laughs> who knows that actually? <laughs> if you do, tell us in chat. <laughs> oh boy. Uh yeah, I'm trying to God, oh, no, this is math. Um uh, no, I'm not doing this. This is too hard. Um yeah, Maka, it's it's, like, you uh the rock you t- is destroyed. You stand back, your hands go up, you clap them together, and I a bolt of white light just shoots from your fingertips. Uh, it strikes the rock, and a chunk of the rock uh, is blasted away. The rock is glowing, but it's still standing. It is this large, heavy chunk of stone. Hmm. I'm just a wee rabbit. 
True. Perhaps we should move it instead of trying to pulverize it. I really lack the capabilities. I will cast Starry Wisp. <laughs> what does that do? Do we as have, as you, do we have as as like, with, like muscle power? Not at all. We... Uh, but since you hit it with Guiding Bolt, I do get advantage. Okay. Starry Wisp is a, a it's a new cantrip. Yeah. Oh, it's just the five point five. Uh yeah, it's yeah, it's from the 2024. It was an option when we leveled up before. So that is gonna be a number to hit. I rolled eight plus plus. I, I know my spell modifier, I promise. It's gonna be a 14 to hit. I'm assuming that hits a rock. Yeah, 14 hits. A stationary I rock, yeah. Know what the damage is, it's one d8. And to be honest, my max is the amount that Maka did with her first level spell, so that's a four. Yeah, it's the other thing. It's uh, where Maka shoots it with this bolt of light and the rock is glowing. Uh, to see you catch on, you're like, oh yes, we can blast this thing to bits. And sparkling, twinkling lights just shoot from your hands. Like just, it's it's a full-on jubilee uh, sparklers <laughs> that just shoot from you. And again, parts of the rock pop and snap off and there's some dust and pebbles, but it's still standing there. Maka, you watch as the two of them are just pelting it with glitter and light. I am oh, sorry, going. Fung, you're watching this, sorry, as they pepper. Yeah, I'm watching this, and in a usually, Fung is extremely gung ho about this kind of stuff, you know, brute strength, right? But she is also a tactical commander, so she will actually, instead of just charging at this rock, she's gonna look around, see if there's any sort of weak point that she can use, like a lever to, you know, to leverage it to roll it to the side. All right, give me a. Uh, I'm glad we've someone smart. Investigation check. <laughs> I am going to use oh, like... my maneuver tactical assessment to give myself a D8. Yeah, sure. Oh, also, Emma, do you know we're level four? No. no. Yeah, uh, Emma, we we're level four. Um... What, what is my character? Oh, level three. Oh, great. Okay. Let me take something now that I forgot we weren't here this. yet last time. I was <laughs> probably let me, told let me you evolve my character for the specific situation. Yeah. Is there I... destroy Rob? Hello, chat. We're D8. I rolled dungeon. a 20. We're not all of us are the same level. 20, 23. <laughs> Uh, you yeah. uh, you get the sense that where the where the rock was kind of smooth, um, you don't see kind of any kind of lip or ledge that you can kind of get something under it. But with the damage that uh, Maka and Deceit have done to it, you could definitely now snag a rope easier around this, uh, and you could definitely try and drag or topple the rock that way. All right, yeah, I will do that. I see a weak point, and then I will tie a rope, and I try, you, rabbit, help me pull. Okay, I'm going to take the crusher feet, which gives me extra strength. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, it brings your eight strength to nine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 let, me, let me do something. Sorry, sorry. What should I roll here? No, I, so uh, I, if, if you're pulling on the, the rope, mm -hmm. um, one of you gets to make an athletics check with advantage. I'll do it. You're I'll busy. Give, we have yeah, the same strength. <laughs> My athletics is minus one, so. So is mine. Okay, oh, no, it's not. Mine yeah, but... is plus one because I what? have. No, it's what? plus wait, zero. Then, that, that means my. Z... Oh, wait. Mine is zero because mine I is, have. I have a um... 10 to strength, so it's a flat zero. Okay. Yeah, I have I have an eight to strength, which means I have minus one, but I have jack of all trades because I'm a bard, so I also have zero. So. Okay. So we're gonna. So no. this is yeah. So it doesn't matter which one yeah. of us. Fung and Deceit are the ones pulling on the rope while Maka is like I'll, yeah, out of breath. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Simply yeah, because I yeah I'll do it simply because I have DM's inspiration. So if I fail this, I can roll again. Okay. With True. Advantage. That was a natural one and a sixteen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so sixteen. You do like on a sixteen. You like you, you feel the rock lifting. And there is in that moment, and you are definitely going to need to give me a strength check, Maka, at this point. Yep, that's fine. I, I actually haven't taken, I took uh, the lucky feet instead. I figured that's always a good one. Okay. <laughs> um, so, lucky rabbit. So, oh. Yeah. Uh, that's a six on strength. Okay. Uh, no, you are, you are pushing. Um, and it is in that moment that as you kind of are kicking into it, uh, Nikki, you're gonna have to burn that DM inspiration to get this over. All right, 
yeah, yeah i'll do it <laughs> i won't even make you i like i you can uh, i won't even make you roll it I, I i take it as a you give it up you get this over uh the, all right yes with, I'll give it up. with that kind of like the command this has to I, i've told them what to do and i have to be right uh <laughs> you you pull uh and with maka kind of shouldering into it deceit uh casting mage hand to like kind of like hold the rope as well um and pull the stone uh is just yanked free it topples over uh the rope snaps and in front of the three of you, you do see a two-foot-wide staircase down into the dark. And there is just this whoosh of stale air up uh, into the grey uh, um, mid-morning sky. I will take the I march in. Okay. <laughs> I will take I'm uh, and then I'm gone. Um, <laughs> you, as you... As you kind of, it's this, it's this spiraling staircase downwards, Fung, uh, and with Maka and uh, Deceit behind you, uh, there's a, there is just, it's pitch dark, and as you round that first sort of bend, uh, there's a moment where all the light is just gone. The further down you look, and then there is just this, foom, foom, foom as three little lights just illuminate and you see these little orbs just flicker uh, and a little uh, kind of yellow phosphorus color just illuminates as they kind of bounce mm. and move and shift uh, and bubble up and down in front of you mm. and they light the way down the, uh, the passageway. All right, yeah, I'll pull my bow and arrow out just to have that at the ready and just creep down. Just sort of like, you know, when my feet are like tapped softly on the ledge in case there's a trap. <clears throat> this isn't spooky at all. And I'll gingerly like wallow. I assume I, you're back in deceit form, by the way. You're not worrying around. Oh, as yeah. It took, it took us like a whole day to get there. I wasn't recasting. I left the, the town, place. bad, gone. <laughs> yeah, no, as soon as I got out of town, I was like, oh, back to me. That was a draining performance, although I was exceptionally convincing, just like a carbon copy of Oster. Golly gee. Um, you, as you come to the bottom of the stairwell, Fung, you do see the lights just kind of, they float out of where they were kind of moving in this straight line. Now they seem to weave, like it's just this hard circular swerve through this narrow corridor. They kind of they they move hmm. to the far western side of this passageway, and they fly upwards, and the light kind of disappears with them, and with your sword <clears throat> kind of drawn, it is that thing of like uh huh, traps. Uh, give me a perception check. Could um, I cast Starlight Shroud as we're descending the stairs? As those lights kind of disappear, it is a again, it's a new spell. Um, the ghostly starlight surrounds your body, casting light in a ten foot radius and dim light for an additional ten feet. And it also does damage to people if they if they attack me for the first time. Um, yeah. So, in in that moment, and uh, Fung, if you want to make your roll for perception, yeah, uh, I I roll thirteen. Okay. There's a moment where you're like, hang on, like you're you check. It's that like fool me once, you'll never fool me again because I'll kill you. Um, <laughs> and you uh, you are kind of poking and prodding the kind of the ground and uh, around the wall a little bit, like so you never know where there might be a trap. Uh, to see as you kind of come in behind Fung, you see that Fung seems to be like tippy tapping, and you throw your hands up and over almost kind of half running them through your hair and uh, there is just this like just this kind of chiffon like effervescent like shroud that now kind of uh drapes along your back uh, like follow, flows behind you like a long veil and cape uh as you are enraptured in this starlight shroud and a little bit of light gives off from it and you see that where you press, like as you kind of hit uh, one of the tiles, Fung, there's a click 
and uh, one of the wisps immediately, one of these little lights just kind of circles down and then it lands in front of you as a pitfall trap opens and it darts down and then uh, you see the light frantically moving back and forth like it's whizzing around the place violently and then it slowly comes back up and it whizzes kind of in front of you and then the other two lights drop down and that golden yellow light that sorry it wasn't golden that soft yellow light uh kind of turns a darker shade uh hmm. roll for initiative Ooh. as you are confronted by against the lights willow wisps okay. oh i hate you all right uh that's a nine from me oh no no wait i have alert so that is 14 not nine it's okay uh 13. I have a I'm plus seven. eight initiative. Oh. I have a 17. Okay, 17. Sorry, uh, Nikki, what did you get? Uh, uh, 14. 14. And uh, Deceit? I have 13. Okay. Oh, these did not that do that well. Um, let me have a look at these. And... Oh, actually, I'm assuming. Okay. Do we still have? Do who, whoever had silvered weapons still have silvered weapons? Yes. Yeah. And sorry, Nikki, you said was it 14? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Maka, you're up as these wisps turn from this soft little yellow light to this almost like uh, violent yellow. Um, as they kind of, you see them kind of spark and hiss, uh, and they kind of jitter around you. Ooh. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cast Sacred Flame in that direction. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is it dex save, I believe? Yes, it is dex of 10. That's a 24. That passes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think, do you take half? No, no it's a cantrip, cantrip, so no. Um, okay, Ooh, I don't know, let me just check my bonus actions. Yeah, there's a moment where, again, like Maka, you come down, you hear the trap clunk, you saw the light uh, wisping around the place, you see these in front of Fung, and you, like, you sneaky little lights, lights shouldn't be sneaky, and <laughs> um, you kind of stare at them, You your aura burns, and it was like, you know, two people can play at that game, uh, and you cast out Sacred Flame, it erupts around the wisps, but the magic is burnt away by their energy. Uh, Fung. All right. Uh, is this thing right in front of me? Yep. Three. The three of them are right in front of you. They're kind of standing in front of you. Okay. Uh, mostly asking because I have my bow. My only my bow. My arrow silvered. So you know what? Secret. Okay. I'll I'll take out one of my silvered arrow and instead of shooting it, I'm gonna stab it. <laughs> Use it as a makeshift sure. weapon. Uh, give me a an attack roll. Natural twenty. Ew. Hell yeah. Love it. Uh, what's the the damage die on your arrows? Uh, I mean on the longbow it's a d8. Okay, so but... it'll it'll be. I'll, I'll I'll go with a six, a d6. Yeah, because it's an improvised the, weapon. Yeah, so uh, you do, you yeah. do six damage automatically, and now you get to roll the damage as normal. Oh, I rolled a six, so because it's a crit, I double it to 12, and I have a plus oh, no. three deck, so 15. Oh, oh, you rolled a six already. Okay. You rolled a six as well. Yeah, I rolled a six. And then yeah, what? On the d6. What's your plus? So 15 damage. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, the plus brings it up to 15. Yeah. You lunge out at this thing. Like, it is that thing of, like, you you're, you reach for the quiver. Um, you pull out one of your silvered arrows. It glows. And you lunge at the wisp. And it, it's, it's like stabbing a puff of fog. Like, there's no real resistance. And as you do lunge at it, though, Fung, you do see its form shift and zap. And, like, uh, it's not able to hold itself together. Uh, and that, like, angry yellow color... Uh, kind of flickers and it, it it weakens to this sort of almost sepia tone uh, and then in that moment it uh, like it it gets much smaller uh, any bonus actions uh, no uh, you know what screw it I'm going to action search and I'm going to attack it again oh okay oh yeah uh, uh, that is a 
Ooh, that ooh. oh god, I forgot my bonus. Uh, that's another twenty, but not natural this time. Okay, yeah, that hits. And I rolled another six on that three. And you know what? I'll also put another superiority that I do distracting strike. Uh, you don't have to. Um, nope. If you want to save that die, uh, all right. How do you defeat this will o' wisp? Uh, I mean, it's I impale it. <laughs> against the wall and i watch as the life leaks i guess i watch as it dissipates <laughs> and savor its death it's like um it's like you know uh, you know those uh, bubble artists who when they blow up they can fill them fill them with smoke uh it's that oh, yeah. it, it, it's like sticking the arrow into a bubble that doesn't burst and as you pin the will-o'-wisp to the ancient walls of the the old walls of the uh this underground tomb you stick it there and there is the the clang of the the silver arrowhead against the stone wall and the light shifts and uh to see and maka you see fung just snag it there uh, it holds it in place and like a like a butterfly struggling in a spider's web uh it twists and flutters itself trying to get free and then the light just flickers it blinks twice, and then it dies. Uh, deceit, your action. Um, I'm just going to do a tried and tested. Uh, if the two of the remaining Elgin ones are still together, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, this is not Hephaestus. Oh, sorry. Um, I haven't rolled in that one, so that's how you can tell. Oh. Uh, <laughs> cast, uh, Cloud of Daggers. Um... There's no save involved. Uh, so on their turn, at the start of their turn, if they start within it, or then if they move into it for the first time on their turn, they'll take 4d4 slashing damage. And it is magical slashing damage. Okay, yep. Uh, so so if, then, you're, if you're casting it in that space in front, like with them, they are, they're, all, they're going to get caught with it. Uh, yeah, so it, it won't damage them until the start of their, their turn. turn. Uh, but I will use my bonus action then to cast mantle of inspiration so it's using one of my bardic uh inspirations uh all three of us get five temporary hit points yeah nice um and we can move up to 30 we can move up to our oh, up to 30 feet without uh, provoking attacks for opportunity so if Fong wanted to back off to be able to shoot she can and i'm going to be backing off to the like no i'll stay i'll stay put i'll stay put okay um but if uh, Deceit is going to urge everybody else to back off a little bit, and I'm going to stay back off 10 feet away from me. So I'm going to stay up, in melee with back them. Back up the stairwell. Yeah. Okay. And Deceit uh, is going to stay kind of up front with them. With that, then, it is the, the two remaining Will-O-Wisps turn. So if you want to roll your 44. Yep. So that is going to be five. And four and one is five. So it's going to be 10 uh, piercing damage. I think it's sorry. Let me double check. I think it's slashing damage. I don't think it matters. It's ten damage. Okay, uh, but I'm going to stay like in front of them, sort of kind of blocking the entrance. They can flip through me if they need. It to. is that thing. They seeing one of the uh, one of its uh, one of its kind die. Um, the other two were already a bit skittish, and then mm -hmm. it is that thing of they both kind of flit and move around, still not ready to give up. Like they mm -hmm. um, they can they can drain you. Uh, and it is that thing to see as you hold up your hands again, just this uh, this storm of daggers just erupts out of the air and you see it twisting and turning, enveloping the space that these wisps uh, are hovering in. And uh, as they kind of dart towards you, they stop in the cloud of daggers. Uh, the energy around them crackles against the the uh, ethereal daggers as they are snagged and slashed and cut. Um, they start to blink, and they are there is just this kind of flashing. Uh, three of you, give me insight checks. Okay. Oh, not one. <laughs> 16. Eighteen. Sixteen. Um. Uh, to see you couldn't give a shit take your poxy light show out of here um <laughs> yeah uh, like harsh harsh lighting thank you uh, stopping so fl fluorescent and okay. you get destroyed um but fung and maka there is for each of you there is that sort of 
they they seem to be there's you, you don't necessarily neither of you know quite what they're saying but they seem to be these little blinks these little flickers they seem to be trying to communicate with each other and i would say fung with the higher role your best your guess is that they seem to be communicating kind of a retreat they do seem it seems hurried like it's a flash blinking and in that both the wisps vanish oh mm. and the three of you feel just this cold breeze down your backs as the air rushes past you mm. and the passageway grows deathly quiet except for the sound of a single drip 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 further down the back i will release concentration on cloud of daggers and defer to the group well that was a bit strange normally these things that try to kill us try to kill us kill us yeah not just make us look bad um, i mean we kind of fucked one of them up and i was fucking the rest of them up too but um and maka you were here but <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we we should probably venture in and, and see what's going on. Um let's just find the sword and get out of here. Yes, they are I agree. Clearly defending something. As the as I think of it, as you are kind of looking around, you're like and, and it's that thing of Fung, you remember the traps and it's that thing of like you pointing them out, you're like, no, yep. no, don't no, not here. Um and you can you can kind of see where there are these little uh plates these little plates in the ground that seem to trigger uh these pitfalls um and again for all of you deceit in particular where there's a trap in a tomb there's treasure um and you as you sort of uh navigate down uh, and out into this space here at the bottom of uh the stairwell finally um you see that there are there's four tunnels there's four passageways hmm. here you there's just this quietness except for that faint dripping sound coming from a little further uh down one of the passageways you can you see four different narrow little walkways North, south, east, and west. We could take one each. Is it best to be alone? After Can I take a listen comment. down each of them? Hmm. I'll take a listen down the east one. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, give me a perception check. That is a number. Um, that's a 12. You don't hear anything to see. Again, you I don't hear the, 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 drip, the dripping isn't coming from this passageway. Hmm. Okay. I don't like the idea of splitting up, but it might not be a terrible it idea. It is the quickest way. Yes. I will oh. take the north passage. I walk north. Okay. Well, don't we die. meet back here in 10 minutes. Fine. Or just shout really loudly. Uh, Deceit, you're going to go east? As you I'll take see. east. All right, I'll take west. Okay. Perfect. I think I still have a few minutes on my Starlight Shroud, too. So, okay. I'll take um, whoever long that takes me. It is. Um, as, the, as the three of you, it's that sort of like and break, and you f kind of you filter out. Um, we'll, we'll start with Deceit. Um, your passageway has these two small little corridors uh, that, again, it's that the, the passageway splits, the corridors go down, and then it reconnects. It's just, obviously, this is just like a support pillar for the tomb or whatever it might be. But you maneuver your way down. And again, the, the, the walkway, the stairwell was about two feet wide. This is a little wider. It's about kind of maybe five feet across. Um, and again the walls are it's like carved stone and you can clearly see like where some of the roots from any of the plant life 
uh, kind of growing here, any of the, like the weeds and roots, flowers, some are kind of jutting through. You make your way uh, down this eastern passage, and as you do, you can you round the corner and you're looking into a uh, a room with two alcoves on the southern wall. So as you're kind of like at the opposite end of where you are, you see down, and there's mm -hmm. in the two alcoves, there are at opposite ends of them, there are burners, like two kind of torch burners, and you recognize two sarcophagi just Ooh. sitting there. Ooh, spooky. Um can is there any plaques on the sarcophagi to read? There doesn't the they don't there doesn't seem to be anything written on them. Uh, mm. What you do see is sort of uh, embossed onto the the lid. Uh, there does seem to be sort of like the the shape of like a warrior of sorts. Like, but both okay. both look the same. Okay. Well, if both deceit reckons that if both have like little warriors on them that they're probably no one special. Like they're probably special, but like, I feel like this lady would probably be buried alone because that's what I would do if I was a hero who slayed a dragon. I wouldn't <laughs> want to be buried with like a twin because like, it, it's about me, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll scan the rest of the room and see if I can find anything interesting in here. Yeah, give me a perception um, check. I will do that. Ooh, that's a better than last time, it's a 14. It's it's really strange. Like you are, you're kind of looking around, and then kind of on the uh, on the western wall. Like as you kind of look back to the way you kind of came, like on on your what's on your left now, um, mm. you can just make out like there is the wall juts out slightly, and you hadn't noticed it before, but there is a very very narrow crawl space. Oh, I can't fit in the crawl space, can I? No, you can. You could. You could. You could squeeze Ooh. through. Because I'm so skinny. No, yeah, I'll squeeze through the crawl space and see what what I can do. As you wedge yourself through, because like, it, it is that thing of like you have to like kind of like, eh, yeah. In. Um, <laughs> can we clip that? <laughs> uh, here you can hear the dripping sound oh oh no is it like deceit uh sorry maka mm. um you are uh as you kind of uh, maneuver kind of again like it's that thing of you uh, Fong and Deceit are, all give each other the nod and you mm. head in the opposite direction to Deceit uh, again uh, passageway here uh, carved stone there does appear to be some kind of embellishment on the wall however like you do see um, like it's 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 hard to kind of fully make out it, like with, with time and like obviously no care to the space. Uh, the the work, the paintwork has kind of slightly faded, but it looks to be like depicting. You see a you see a woman on a horse, um, and kind of uh, behind her a little bit. And they these four individuals appear to have like a little bit more detail than she does. Uh, you see a uh, a half elf. Uh, you're not really sure gender actually not really sure the gender of any of these bar that woman on the horse uh but there's uh, definitely a half elf or an elf um with a what looks like a a lute or a banjo or some sort of string instrument um and like it, their head is tilted back and they seem to have a big wide smile uh behind them holding a heavy tome uh you see a uh a young uh, a young human person uh, in long flowing robes and hair kind of pulled back up and high um, just kind of next to them and slightly lower uh, there's a, a another young human uh, <clears throat> kind of wearing armor 
and uh, in the back there is a young gnome um, wearing what looked to be like priestly vestments. Um, they seem to be in the in this little artwork in this painting. They seem to be the focus. And as you kind of drift further down the this passageway, you do again. There are these little depictions of them until you get to a doorway, and over it you see kind of four. Um, four of what look like family crests, and in the room you you see four four alcoves and four sarcophagus. So sarcophagi. Sarcophagus. 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 Yeah. Do I see anything that might look like like a warrior with a sword, like on any of them? They the sarcophagus. <laughs> These sarcophagi, the coffins, the, the, the coffins, the coffins, the boxes, the boxes in the room, the caskets, the caskets. Um, the sarcophagi in the alcoves uh, are all embellished and carved. The lids are all carved, and you see the bard, the warrior, the wizard, and the cleric. Hmm. Hey, we don't have a wizard. Do we not? No. This isn't about us. I'm just trying to make it about us. <laughs> hey, we don't have. This a is not where we're buried. Like we're still alive. Like, <laughs> can I go over and try open the cleric one just to make it about me again? <laughs> um. Uh, you're like I'm a better cleric. I'm not dead. Yeah. Um, you, Take you that, do, idiot. Uh, you you push the the lid. Um, there's there's only there's only like there's only rags. There's a pile of like pile of dust and some rags. Useless. Um. Can I try? Uh, fuck, I should have looked this up before this, but um, I, th I have a spell that lets me like detect if there's any like undead within sixty feet. Uh, yeah, that would have been great. Um, <laughs> what um, is that? What's that spell? Yeah, listen. Yeah, uh, it just that's just one of those things that happens, right? Hmm. I'm f yeah, sorry. I, I'm wasting time here. No, you're, you're fine. Don't worry. Uh, let's do it. Oh, is it Eyes of the Grave? You're a death domain cleric, or you're grave domain cleric, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, it's your first double feature, Eyes of the Grave. It's a um, yeah, it's a feature, so it wouldn't be in spells. It's, you can open your awareness magically. Yes, to there we go. Yeah. Dead. You know, like, uh, you know, as an action, you know, the location of any undead within 60 feet. Of you that isn't behind total cover and isn't ooh they would be behind total cover wouldn't they? And isn't protected from divination magic until the end of your next turn. I'll cast it anyway. It's very strange. Uh, there's there's a lot of dead things here, but there's nothing undead. Okay. Can I open the other three tombs? Yep. Uh, Sorry. Sarcophaguses. Sarcophaguses. Um, Sarcophaguses. Sarcophaguses. Uh, super califragilistic. <laughs> <laughs> can I open the other three super califragilistic? Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, it is a thing of, and like, are, are you being like careful about it? Or no. Not? Okay. And it's like, oh, there was nothing in that one. Terrible. So there's, so there's definitely not going to be any other. Yeah. So it is that thing of like, you are like, you, you, you flip the lid on one and uh, it's the fighter because, like, surely the fighter's got something. Uh, the fighter's corpse is. Uh, you clearly see that uh, this uh, this person must have died in a horrific battle. Uh, there's a there's a whole part of their body that's just not there. Uh, there's just a whole chunk of them that, like, their the armor has kind of fallen in, but you can see kind of some of a skeleton, mm. and there is no there is no left side. Like there is no left arm. There's no left shoulder bone or anything like that. It's just gone. Um, but as you kind of rifle through the remains of the uh, wizard and the bard, uh, 
you come across the bard. The bard has been buried uh, with a really like it must be. It must be what you saw them holding. Thing. It's it's a loot. It's a really dusty, musty looking loot. Um, but as you lifted the, um, as you lifted the lid, you clearly heard the strings of the loot snap and play and butterflies and moths like these wonderful colors just kind of like erupted out of the, the sarcophagus um and you have found a loot of illusions oh fun um with that sort of peppering your step it's like okay i'm gonna go loot the next coffin um and wrapped around the uh wrapped around the neck of a uh mummified wizard uh you find a necklace of fireballs ooh that'll be useful necklace of fireballs add <laughs> um, <laughs> inventory um, and what, what was it loot of illusions a loot of illusions that's not here allowed that's custom one um it's it's under instrument of illusions i believe oh okay yeah. with with this uh like and like maka it's a thing of like oh my god gray robbing is the best um found a new pastime <laughs> yes and as a grave cleric i can do it pretending i'm doing something spiritual uh, <laughs> uh, this is work <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be buried with these things that's blasphemous i'll take them <laughs> um Fung. Everyone knows you can't take them with you. Uh, you, um, <laughs> you directly, Ooh. promptly, and efficiently uh, march north. Uh, the other two have chosen the wrong path. Yep. Uh, you know it. They'll know it soon. Um, and it doesn't. Uh, your your footsteps, your armor, your cl the, the clinking sound. There's stuff on the walls. Trivial absolute mm -hmm. nonsense when you're dead you're dead you don't need these things mm -hmm. um and uh paying little to no attention to many of these uh intricate details um you just bulldoze your way through the north passage and there uh you find yourself looking into a long room and on either side uh, close to the entrance, you see these two deep alcoves. And here uh, you see on one the uh, uh, clearly uh, a what's it's meant to look like a warrior atop a horse. Uh, now, it's not a full figure thing. It's like the horse is half coming out of the sarcophagus and the, the, the warrior is riding it. And on the other side, you see a uh, hefty dwarven person uh, holding a shield and a hammer up again, as if rising out of the uh, the sarcophagus and the stone. What catches your eye is at the very end of the. There is a huge dragon's head. Oh, Declan's died again. Oh, what a what a dramatic pause! <laughs> <laughs> what a dramatic pause! Hello. Um, Terrible timing. Dramatic pause, though. Yeah. Where Where did the dramatic pause happen? A huge um, dragon head. Dragon's head. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the. The, the top and lower jaw are open and sitting in its maw is a large, wide, heavy sarcophagus. Hmm. I will approach that sarcophagus inside the dragon's maw carefully, keeping an eye out for traps because we stumbled upon one on the way down. Okay. Give me and a perception. Once I get close enough, I'm going to see if there's any... Oh. Oh, God. I rolled a two. <laughs> yeah, nope. You, you, again, you're looking out for those plates. You, you spotted those. You don't see any of those. 
All right. Yep. I will just march right up to the sarcophagus then. Are there any like writings on it to, or anything to indicate that this is in fact the the sarcophagus where the person that we're looking for is buried under? I forgot her uh, name. <laughs> Lady Alagander, you um yes. You don't like again it's a thing of like hang on, oh wait, maybe that's her tomb. And then it's thing as 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 you go to turn, you see what's resting on top of the sarcophagus where the other two had these fixed statuesque figures the warrior riding the horse mm. the the dwarven uh squire would hammer and shield you don't see anything ornate kind of sticking out of the, it just this just looks like a stone coffin and it, it's that thing of you you'd almost miss it until like out of the corner of your eyes you go to turn to check the ones behind you there isn't a glint it's just you just you just happen to notice it lying there uh almost like a like a lock across the the top of the sarcophagus you see a long sword mm -hmm. covered in a layer of dust oh i will carefully reach a hand out towards the sword and lift it gen gently in case it triggers if it triggers anything i'll drop it immediately okay <laughs> You, it's the, like with kind of hesitation, and you, you can you can hesitate here because there's no one to see you. Um, mm. You you reach for the sword, hand half trembling. There is a hum from the sword as you reach out, and as you take the, the handle, you see that the the actual hilt. It's quite strange. You would you would see this sort of cuff on a rapier, that sort of wonderful metalwork that ornate around the handle. There seems to have been uh, something affixed to it. And at first, it's like it just looks. It looks it, again. It looks like that sort of cuff you'd see on a rapier, but it's a wing. It's a it's a silver and jade wing. Um, it's, it's an embellishment on the handle, and as you lift it, you feel a hum of power. Um, and you are you, there's a there's an energy that uh, you can almost again. It's that thing of like it's like touching static. You're not quite sure what it is, uh, Fung, but you're holding something in your hand that hums with power. And then you hear uh, I will the... grab the sword and instantly jump backwards. <laughs> okay. uh, grabbing the sword and jumping back kind of uh, in, in, in motion to attack, your eyes dart around the room, but you see nothing. Deceit. Hi. Um, All right. I will. As as Ooh. you're oh, <laughs> squeezing through uh, this uh, narrow tunnel, um, make me a perception check, please. Doki doki. This is going to end well, I'm sure. Um, sorry, I was just about to check something. Here, I think I have a plus three to this. Ooh, a nineteen. Okay. There's that moment where you're like. Okay, just holding your breath and just sort of like sucking it in. You're like, okay, I can just I can shift through. And it's the thing of like you are just kind of pressing through. And then you remember, oh, wait a minute, there was traps. And you look down and you are an inch away from stepping on a trigger plate. Ooh. And it's that you lift your foot Ooh. and you shimmy over it. And it's the thing of like, whew, like something... Something at that moment, uh, you don't know whether it was, obviously it was your own brilliance, but maybe somebody's watching out for you. Um, but it's probably, it was probably just you and your own brilliance. It's definitely not that old lady. It's definitely not that old lady. Um, you do, uh, you do slink through. And again, you, you emerge in a, uh, in a small, it's, it's slightly smaller room than the one you had just come through. And, here, uh, 
there's a there is a there is a faint smell and you can hear the dripping and in the ceiling you can see oh right there's obviously some sort of water coming down and it's mm -hmm. thudding on a it's hitting something that 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 sound mm -hmm. and then you see there's a mound of leather sort of rotting like it's Ooh. it's grown damp but the leather it seems to be affixed to and then you look at it and like there's bones like it it looks it looks like the remains of an animal Ooh. um the leather does it look like it's skin or does it look like something it's wearing it looks as if it was a saddle Ooh. does it look expensive it could have been expensive but uh, exposed to the water uh, and not having been taken care of it is beginning to rot or is, is there rotting. anything else is there anything else in this room no hmm. you, there's a passageway just... out like you can you can this must be kind of as you look up on the northern wall this must be this must be the southern room okay so i see that this is a, a way to get out sorry i'm gonna yawn i'm doing it all day it's really bothering me sorry um this is a way another way out like if we needed to escape no so if the there was four passageways in this barrow this is just the other one yes that we missed. you have snakes okay, through perf. yeah okay perf. You, you hear a clacking sound as you're looking down this passageway back out the mm -hmm. there is a clack Ooh, and then there's another anything? one. Uh, as you turn around, you see that some of the bones are lifting. Oh it's no, we're going back into the other room. We're we're I'm scurrying back. Uh, Ew. You again? It's a, like it's it's not a. Oh, I, I can do this quickly. You start to push in as you see the horse is kind of reforming, um, and as you slip through the room. Uh, the horse just kind of turns and it looks at you and it bows its head as it, this kind of spectral horse just kind of bows at you. Oh, I'll unsqueeze. <laughs> um, I will bow back. Um, hello. Uh, it, you hear kind of a, <sighs> and it, but it's kind of, it echoes and then it rustles its head slightly. Oh, well, you seem friendly. Um, we're looking for a sword. No? It's, it's just staring at you. <laughs> hmm. Do I have any way to communicate with animals? I don't think I do. Also, it's dead, so, like... Uh, um, well, you seem nice. I am going to go that way um lovely meeting you please come see my one person show and i'll just hand a business card out and just like <laughs> drop it on the floor because i don't know how to interact with animals <laughs> like at all let alone dead horses so like and then i'll scurry through the crawl space <laughs> or go to it anyway um it like it goes to like bite the, the cards as you kind of drop it and then it, it bows its head to pick it up uh, like and to like kind of bite it into its teeth as you kind of like okay now's my chance to slip through uh, yeah. you slip through and you, you're you shimmering oh, you shimmy <laughs> over the, the plate mm -hmm. and you slip back into the eastern room and as you kind of look around you're like okay gather myself get, get out of here that's weird there's a whoosh and the spectral horse just passes through the walls. Oh. So you'd like an in-person performance, I see. Um, well, why don't you just like come with us and then we'll we'll do it from there. I'm a very good company and I'll just like lead the horse with me. I'll go have a look at those other sarcophagus this is the size though. Just like I'll have a look at them and see if there's anything in or around them because uh, nobody's alarmed or alerted me yet to anything going on okay we'll so see if i can if i can op open them okay uh 
Give me a give me a deck saving throw. Oh, I hate you. I didn't pick the room. <laughs> oh, that's pretty high. Um my deck's ooh, 17. Okay. Um take That's too many dice stacked. Uh, six acid damage. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, again, you shift the lid back, and there is just this like, <gasps> of toxic air, like this poisonous cloud fills the room. The horse doesn't even react; it doesn't respond. It just kind of, um, it's just looking at you. Okay. Probably, I should probably just leave. Does the poison gas like linger? It, I think as the room fills as as quickly as it filled, it just dissipates. Okay, I'll open the other one. Because so, what's the like? What's the worst that could happen? Throw. Give me another deck saving throw. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's even better. That's an eighteen. Okay. Two, eight, eleven. <laughs> um, take seven poison dam. Uh, yeah, seven acid damage. That's fine. As a second cloud of gas just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is there anything in the coffins? There's nothing of interest in the coffins. <sighs> what the horse of... makes the same sound. Uh, I agree. What kind of idiot is buried with poison gas? <laughs> Fools couldn't even be buried with a nice sparkly necklace or something. Anyway, um, I'll saunter back towards the rest of the, towards like the meeting area and I'll throw a little cure wounds on myself okay. uh, on my way back. Um, you filter back, um, and it's about that time that as you're coming back, uh, Maka has just finished kind of pilfering the coffins, uh, and it, like I like what's is Maka wearing the necklace and strumming on the lute? Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Hell yeah. Maka, I mean, yeah. she has zero idea how to play a lute, but yeah. she is having a great time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You've got a necklace of fireballs around your neck. Well, it just it's just this black string with like these little fiery glowing little orbs uh, that there is a bang of magic off of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Maka. And as you kind of come back, you see Deceit um, and behind them, there is a ghost horse. Oh, who's, who's your friend? Um, it's just a horse I found. Okay. <laughs> Did you find anything fun? I found poisonous gas. I found this loot. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and this really nice necklace. Do you like it? Oh, it's so gaudy. Just your style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, take a point Ooh. of inspiration. <laughs> 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 it's no problem. Of course. She's gonna. She's actually gonna clip it, clip it, clip it, clip it. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it now. She's gonna sheepishly take it off and put it in her uh, in her backpack. Oh, <gasps> oh no! <laughs> clip it, clip it, clip it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to be clipping that. So you <laughs> do, do okay. what you're doing. You yeah, can interact with the, the horse if the, you want. The two of you kind of meet and you're looking at the horse. You're looking at the necklace. You're putting it in your bag. Fung. Uh, mm. Does a... Da, 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 does a 19 hit? Uh, yes. <laughs> and then a nat 20 hits definitely then as well on top of it. Um, oh, God. So six. Uh, Twelve. Um, 15 and 18, 21, uh, take 22 points Hi, of Mark. bludgeoning damage. Oh uh, my God. <laughs> as holding the, holding your, holding the new, the long sword in your hand, uh, you just feel this wallop, um, something crashes into you hard and slams right into you. It's as if the air just became solid and there is this chittering, scattering sound as it does. And then immediately, as you kind of catch the air uh, in yourself, you feel it ripped from you again as it lunges into your back. Um, and again, there is just this blistering whisper uh, out of this entity. Uh, that you cannot see. Uh, is oh boy, roll for initiative. Who hey, just Nikki or just uh, yep? Yeah, oh boy, do we hear this? Do we hear like uh, this? Commotion? No, because this this is happening kind of before ye arrive. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, boots. 21. <laughs> okay, that that beats my 18. Um so uh 21 18. Uh Fung, you're up. Uh but you cannot see what's attacked you. All right. So to start us off with, I am going to use my bonus action to do second win. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, wow. And there's the their second, second wind. wind. I'm tapped out. <laughs> the second wind is I'm leaving. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good, good. I feel bad for my insult now because I'm poor Maka putting the necklace. No, in <laughs> she's just like she just loves positive attention, so she'll figure. Oh, it. she's just insecure. Yeah, and I'm just an asshole. So <laughs> yeah. fair. Don't feel bad for her. She's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, they're back. They're back. Okay. Hi. All right. So, what was the last thing you heard me say? Second, second wind. wind. Second wind. Okay. Yes, I, I, I'm gonna second wind, and I roll a ten on a d10, so I heal fourteen awesome. hit points. Nice. And then I am just going. <laughs> look, Feng is a warrior in all things, but Ghost, she doesn't mess around with, so she's just gonna turn around and run. Action, gonna run again. <laughs> okay. Dash. Uh, it's gonna take an attack of opportunity on you. Um, I will tank it. Uh, uh I assume eleven doesn't hit. No, it misses. Okay. Um, you just feel, again, there is this r violent rush at you, Fung, as you turn on heel and you dash. Uh, like, you bolt out of the room as hard, as fast as you can, uh, weaving kind of between uh, the kind of the ornaments and the intricacies here in this uh, in this tomb. Uh you make it just back towards the door when you feel the air behind you rush violently towards you. Um, in this moment, Maka uh, and uh, Deceit, uh, you are both kind of returning. And uh, Fung, as you make it into the passageway, uh, the creature is on top of you. Um, yes, because it, it will. It, it, it has a movement speed of 50 feet. Um, oh, God. So, uh, it's yeah, it's gonna make it. Um, does a fifteen hit? Fifteen just hits. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, take take ten bludgeoning damage. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, and then a nat one on its second oh. attack. Um, so normally with a nat one, you get a a reaction. Um. Like a, like a reaction to attack it back. Um, so you can, if you want to take a swing at it, like you do feel, like you feel it wall up into you, this wall of air uh, just slam into you. Uh, I'm guessing disadvantage. Uh, mm, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Only because uh, nah. you said it. <laughs> Oh god, I should have kept my mouth shut. Uh, I rolled a 15 and a 2, so I missed. Okay, yeah, no, it's that thing of like, it's not even with the sword, it's more like you swat out at it uh, as you kind of scramble to your feet. Um, it's your action. Alright, I will can do, it's a bit dangerous to run if I get hit. How far away am I from where we were? Uh, you're only about 30 feet away. Okay, I'll run then. Uh, oh wait, only thirty feet. I am going to disengage and then with my action, and I'm going to run the rest of the thirty feet and rejoin everyone else. Perf. Yeah, you you'll just make it back to that central uh, room uh, where you can, like, out of the corner of your eye, you can just see deceit. Uh, they said something about a gaudy necklace. Um, as <laughs> again, like you come running, both Maka and deceit, you hear. Uh, Fung's footsteps yeah. and labored breathing. Um, are you doing anything in this moment, Fung? I will just go. I have the sword. I'm being chased by a ghost as she, oh. as she runs. <laughs> yeah, That's probably our cue to go. Uh, Deceit and Maka give me initiative rolls. Sure. Uh, you won't replace Fung uh, and the entity 
you'll just join the initiative order. So whoever rolls higher of the two of you will go after mm. the entity. Cool. Seven. Okay. Uh, so I rolled a 10. Oh, no, sorry, 11. 11. No, I can do maths. It's 10. I'm so stupid. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Maka. So the entity is going to make two more attacks on you, Funk. Ooh. Oh, boy. 14 Happy doesn't again. hit. No, 14 hits. <laughs> My AC is 14. Four. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, no. Did my, my connection drop? A little, uh, bit. Yeah, a little bit, but you're back. Yeah, but okay. it was okay. laggy for So uh, that was a 14 hit. Yes. Yeah. And it, Okay, and the other one was a 25, so these all hit. Um, oh, I'm going down. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, oh, wait. The, the 25, can I use silvery barbs on that, please? Uh, do you have to see the creature to be able to do silvery barbs? Oh, maybe. 14. Is this thing just straight up invisible? Yeah. Bruh. Uh, one reaction which you which you take when a creature you can see. Yeah, you're right. Damn. Yeah. Rip. Uh, 14 bludgeoning damage. Uh, uh oh, again, I'm down. <laughs> uh, the first, yeah, the first hit, uh, kind of sends you... I've gone again. Yeah. Uh, the first hit manages to, uh, it, it sends you kind of spilling forward. The second hit wallops you into the wall that you catch yourself against, and you crack your head against the wall and you drop. Uh, to oh, see, no. you just see Fung fly off their feet, hit the wall, and now they've sank. Uh, oh, no. Um, we can't see what attacked her. No. No. Oh, shit. Um, I guess seeing Fung drop, I will throw a second level healing word at her, um, just to pick her back up. Um, healing word has now been improved by the latest addition to the rules. Uh, all he like the basic healing spells have been improved. So if you have the old version of yeah, cure like wounds one extra dice. and healing, yeah, if you have the old version of cure wounds or healing word, Emma, uh, I have to spare the dying. But, if you have cure wounds or, or healing word in your spells at all, because like you're a cleric, you can pick them mm. during the day, or like not during the day, but at the start of the day, uh, you might you could still have the legacy versions at some point. That's going to be not great. And then so five and four is nine plus four. Uh, it's thirteen. You get thirteen hit points back. Um, and then, all right, for my action, oh my god, what the fuck do I do for my action? I genuinely don't know. Bards don't do anything with their action, they just use their bonus action for inspiration. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess I will. Oh, she's got the sword, right? Mm -hmm. No, fuck, I used the spell already. Darn, uh, I'll just cast starry wisp in the direction of that hallway and see if you, i can hit it yeah you can make an attack roll with disadvantage cool okay that is a 14. that's your lowest roll yeah yeah that 14 hits yeah okay perfect oh this is great actually this is starry wisp uh that's gonna be three damage and it cannot benefit from being invisible oh um Fuck. Yeah, oh, so okay, right. combat over. All right, everyone, go home. Uh, <laughs> um, I just starry wisp the new cantrip. You launch a mode of light that one creature or object within range. Uh, it emits dim light in ten foot radius and can't benefit from the invisible condition. The creature can't benefit from the invisible. Yes. Condition. Okay. Um, it is that thing. Uh, you. It's like oh, there's something over there, and you just throw your hands out, having <laughs> you just see Fung kind of like. Uh, like their eyes flicker. Uh, and they're okay. They're they're alive. They're fine. And then it's like, eh, and you throw your hands out again. There is just this radiant little shoot of sparkles uh, that coalesce into this little orb of light. Uh, and it's 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 really creepy. Um, it's still invisible, but you can see it outlined. It's like it's like somebody put the shape on the wind, uh, and it's it's. 
it's just these it's flaps and folds of air that has this vague visage of a face uh you can see these sunken uh shadows of eyes um and if oster was here oster would tell you that's an invisible stalker ah um it is maka your turn um you can now see uh so nikki in case you missed it you the as you kind of as your eyes blink open uh you can now see looming over you this it, it looks like a monster made of air oh. all right um i if you didn't hear i made it so that we can we can attack it as if it doesn't have invisible basically ah. Okay, nice. Good. Um, I, I think I'll cast Guiding Bolt on it. Okay. Um, ugh, that's a seven to hit. Seven does not hit. Shocked. Um, mm. And then I don't really have any bonus actions. How far am I away from? About 20 feet. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm fine. That's it. She just does something uh, useless again. Yeah, no, Maka, you throw your hands up. There's a, a flash of light, but you're like, I don't know what I'm hitting. I think it's over there. Uh, it's the wind. It's the air. You strike out. It hits the wall. There's a splash of light uh, that just bursts into little orbs and then dissipates. Uh, Fung, your action. All right. Uh, I'm going to see the thing above me feeling a bit vengeful. I'm going to still grip in the long sword that I took from the sarcophagus. I'm going to swing that sword at it. Okay. Uh, the sword has a plus one to attack and damage rolls. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh my god, I rolled so low for that. Uh, that is a 12. 12 does not hit. Damn it. Ah, damn it. Okay, uh, <sighs> that's all I can do. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the you swing out, but like the, again, the thing twists and it sort of sinks under itself uh, as the air. Just oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot I have. I have fainting attack so i'm going to use a bonus action to expend a superiority die to add it to my roll okay please don't roll a one. I'll, I'll oh, i rolled a six so that's an 18. okay 18 hey. hits. yeah 18 hits. <sighs> okay and now i'll do the damage with the sword oh my god i rolled a three on that so that's a oh wait i just, this is a long sword right yes it is yeah oh wait so that means i've been i can't add my dexterity so Okay, so you're not proficient with it. No, I, I'm proficient no. with longsword, but I have a zero strength, to strength rather than death. A strength. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have a zero. So uh, that's just four damage. <laughs> four damage. Is that, yeah. is that with the plus one? Yeah, with the plus yeah. one. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. You. It's a thing of you slap out with the the longsword. Uh, you slash. Uh, you see, it does. You do seem to hit it. You see that that weird face that it's holding, kind of like is cut up. Um, and it, it sees the sword in your hands. Mm. Um, there's a moment where it seems to hesitate, but then you attacked it, uh, oh. and it, it launches itself at you again. Uh, an 18 on the first hit, uh, Fung. Oh, yeah. um, and an 8 on the second one. So I'll silvery one. barbs the first one, because I can see it now. Okay. Um, I... Actually, use a reaction. So. Okay, it's a, I'm running it's out of spell slots. So. Twenty-one. Fuck. Uh, well, I'll give advantage to Fung. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, take eight bludgeoning damage from the first attack, uh, as it just um, again it slams down into your hands at the sword, um, mm. and then it kind of twists itself back up and it goes to kind of like ram you again. Uh, this time it hits the wall because you kind of like half stumbled out of the way, Fung. Mm. Uh, and deceit it is your action okay uh time to go everyone um i'm going to cast my um mantle of inspiration uh so everybody gets five temporary hit points yay it's definitely gonna knock it and knock the shit out of those <laughs> um and we can move 30 feet without provoking attacks of opportunity and then i'm going to use my action and movement to dash so a total of 90 feet to book it the fuck out of there so i get we all get a free 30 feet of movement i'll run my 30 feet and i'll dash my another 30 feet okay um with with that um 
uh, seeing that Fung has the sword, seeing this thing isn't, it doesn't seem to have taken much damage. It still seems to be holding itself. Mm -hmm. uh, your energy kind of just dissipates and it's a very inspiring, get the fuck out of here. And you are like, there's a cloud of dust where you were, uh, <laughs> as you bolt up the staircase, uh, you are out on top of the hilltop. Perf. Uh, everybody else can move the 30 feet and then I'll just say, like, I, I'm urging everyone to d dash the fuck out of there. But right. if we need to stay moving away from it, I can do that every turn. So we can move, right. each of us can move a total of probably about 90 feet on our turn. Yeah, I'll have the B60 because I need to disengage. I cannot take another hit. No, you could, no, you you move the thir the free 30 feet without... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Again. And you oh, move nice. then on my turn. So we all move together for the first 30 uh, feet, and then I move feet. another 60. All right, okay. yeah. Um, so it is they're actually good. Um, <laughs> Maka, are you going to take the dash action to follow behind and get up and out? Yeah, and I have um, the rabbit okay. hop, uh, which lets me go another 10 feet as well. OK, nice. Because um, obviously, you have to beat deceit. Um, of course. Yes. Uh, and it's a thing to see as, as you were about to you, you can see the light you can see like the, the end uh maka just springs out over you and like gracefully shoots up out of the tunnel like in this one bounding motion uh and like <laughs> try <does> hard <laughs> uh, and like lands on a parallel roll um and fung are you again oh yeah i'm running, running. <laughs> yeah uh, you all Full feel Maddie. the air kind of whooshing up the tunnel behind all of you and fung it's i think of like as you get up uh, the three of you kind of looking back, you see this invisible stalker uh, kind of reach up and then just wallop itself against the stones uh, and it just slinks back down into the dark. Yeah. Oh, I had a feeling it was just kind of tied to this place, but I was so glad I wasn't wrong. <laughs> Could you imagine? We'd be all dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I will take that moment to catch my breath for a bit, and then I'm going to inspect the sword that I just risked my life for and see what it is. Let's let's set up a little a little camp or something. You know let's do get as far as we can away from here before we lose the light, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, agree. Oh, um, I miss my ghost horse. <laughs> I was going to call her Renee. She was beautiful. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, and it is there, like, and there is the, the horse just does that little like one hoof to the ground, and then it bows at Fung and Maka. This is Renee, Renee, Fung, Fung, Renee, mm -hmm. Renee, Maka, Maka, Renee. I'm gonna have to do all of this again when we see Oster and Gideon. Hmm. A noble steed. She's so pretty. Uh, yeah, like again, it just it tosses its spectral ghost <laughs> mane. Um, um, yeah, you. I love how you get cursed with wear ratism, and you also get a dead horse. Um, <laughs> this is going to be wonderful material for my one-person play. Uh, think of the money you'll save having to like transport stuff now. Exactly, the lying, the rat, and the horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't. You. I can't give you any more inspiration. That was worth. Damn it. it. I'm just um, too funny. Tune in next time, guys. For and I'm taking that inspiration <laughs> off of you. Uh, so, <laughs> um, it cancels itself out. It is like as as the evening uh, rolls uh, in, and like you again, you move down the barrow and towards your horses. Now you've another horse uh, to see that you could uh, have with you. Um, I'll ride the spectral horse because that's cooler. But okay. I'll bring the other horse like along with me, and they can be friends. They're not. They're giving each other side eye and serious oh, envy. Uh, Shirley, but... please. Renee is new. Be nice. Um, no, she spits. Um, oh. And yeah, she's just unhappy. The Fung, the entire time with the longsword, you are trying to look at it. You're like your eyes. You can't. You can't take them off of the the handle and that uh, mm. ornamentation of it. And now, kind of like out in the light, and you see that it's late into the afternoon as you are kind of trotting back towards Fandolin. Mm. There you clearly see uh, written, uh, like engraved on the inside of the wing, um, as Draca, named after the beast she fell, mm. um, the Dragonslayer. Uh, 
it is that thing of your uh, your experience your uh your knowledge of combat your not your your whole intent uh fung to come here to slay this dragon uh you know something deep within you tells you a sword named after the dragon it killed gains power mm. um when you hit a dragon with this weapon, dragon meaning any dragon type creature, including dragon turtles and wyverns, they take an extra 3d6 slashing damage. Oh, wolf. Uh, uh, what is the name of the weapon so I can add it to my inventory? So it is, uh, I, I can send it to you after. It is just, it's just, I, I named it as Draca because, like, it's just called Dragon Slayer Longsword. Lame. I'm naming it after uh, Dragon it killed as as Draca. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. but it's, it's the Dragon Slayer Longsword, uh, and it's a legacy item that you can pull in. Uh, there is that, like, uh, as you are kind of heading back and, like, Maka, you are eyeballing the, the necklace. You're like, I really think it was a nice necklace. And you like, oh, fuck it, I'm putting it on anyway. Um, <laughs> still strumming along on your loot. You're like, hey, look to see. I'm a bard now, too. Uh, anybody can do this. Um, and the teacher's like, I can teach you how to play if you'd like. No, this oh, is well, uh, yeah, well, maybe I, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I've got one too, and I pull out my loot and I'll start to like show you. Like, I feel like if Maka starts playing, the seat's that kind of person that's like, Oh, I'm also really good at something, but also you're doing this wrong and I need to help. It's like I can't have you embarrassing yourself by playing the loot wrong. I need to do it better. <laughs> I'm like a harsh but fair teacher. Okay. Oh, you yeah. can do it that way. Oh wow. Okay, I've learned something. Are um... we? Still... <laughs> Are we still both on horseback, just playing loots and I'm loots. learning from you? Yeah. yeah. While yeah. Fung is like inspecting a sword. Like, yeah. Yep. I think this That's has been fun. the most successful mission, and it it is that thing of like as you are riding back towards Fandolin and into the late kind of afternoon, early evening. Um, it is that thing of like, wow, things go really well when we don't have Oster and Gideon with us. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, I, if you think about it, this little scene is like the most D and D that this group has actually engaged with. Like the most like D and D typical. Like we're all on horseback. We're traveling from one town to another. We're playing little instruments, and I'm teaching you how to do it. And someone is inspecting a magic sword that we found that slays a dragon that we got from a dungeon. Yeah. Like it's so <laughs> womp womp. You're playing D and D. It's so funny. Yeah. Look. I think uh, it's the fact, it's the fact that it's like a, a pre-given like starter pack. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's also... That's also that, that and the fact that Oster doesn't get to tell the story. It is, <laughs> it is the three of you going, no, I did this. And like, at, at it's at that moment as you're like, but yeah, we, we got the sword and we got the loot. And, you know, the three of you notice that the tavern has gone deftly quiet. Oh. All the all the Neverwinter University students are just enraptured at the story that the three of you have been shouting at each other uh, <laughs> for the last 45, 60 and minutes. You, and you. And they're like, so like, what happened next? Um, <gasps> and it's at that point that we go to roll our D4. Uh, Emma, did you, do you have that on the overlay, or did I? Is that a Declan thing? It might be a Declan thing. Where okay. would I find it? If That's I fine. Was in... You know, it doesn't matter. No, it's fine. I have yeah. um, physical. I have a physical D four. We'll roll a physical D four. Um, okay, so we'll give that a go. Okay, so uh, Deceit one, Maka two, Fung three, and uh, Gideon four. Okay, mm -hmm. Maka. Uh, is it? Uh, <gasps> yes. And it is a thing of like, Maka, as you start chanting, and you, and you, they're just going, you go, you go, you go. Uh, like, and you, and, and you, you. And, <laughs> and you, and you. And like, Oster is like, but no, wait, that wasn't the plan. Um, and then uh, Oster goes, like, but Gideon, we did the other stuff. Uh, do you want to hear? And like, nobody cares. Uh, everybody <laughs> wants to hear. Like, but Gideon is like, but I got this really cool conch uh, and like holds up this kind of shell. Um, they went to go do the other task and the Shipwreck. Tower of Light. So I'm going to ask um, 
if it's okay with you, uh, Emma, at the start of the next random DMs, that myself and Ralph roll. Um, you can set the difficulty for the checks, or whatever it might be. But we would. I, I. It's a thing I have at the end of my session that how well did Gideon and Oster fare uh, plundering the Tower of Light? Um, uh, it's the Tower of Storms, but in in, in Oster's vision, it was the Tower of Light um, uh, for treasure. So we can, and you can decide what those checks are. You can decide the difficulty, but without having to tell the story, it's like okay, like speed through it. And then we'll fill in the gaps as to what we did. And then Maka goes back to what we did next as we all regroup. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, writing this down on my list. Okay. Folks, um, this has been very random, if not slightly atypical D&D. &D. Um, uh, you've been watching so random. Different yeah, for us. So different. I feel so weird. Uh, this is so random that it was that. Clear cut. <laughs> we're, um, we're so random that we've looped back around to normal again. Actually, and playing now we're just normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the series is now cancelled. Uh, we will see you for uh, various dungeon masters in the new year. Um, but uh, you've been watching Random DMs here on D8 Dungeon. I'm Declan, and I've been this session's dungeon master. Tune in in two weeks' time, where Emma, our very own Maka, will be taking the DM's chair. Uh, a big thank you to Dahi and Fa for delivering some killer blows, um, both emotionally and physically, uh, this evening. Um, to check out more from D8 Dungeon, we stream here every Monday and Thursday with random DMs, Ben and Declan on a roll. Uh, Beyond Horizon's Edge, which is on a campaign break. We're not coming back for Beyond Horizon's Edge until January. So plenty of time to head over to our YouTube channel and watch the first campaign if you want to catch, catch all of it in its glory. Super. Um, and if that's, uh, if you're like, oh man, I want to watch something on Monday night. Well, we have our Gothic horror series inspired by some of the great works of literature that I rip off, uh, for <laughs> my campaign. Uh, no, uh, we are playing Saving Grace, a Gothic horror inspired, uh, D and D, uh, adventure. Uh, if you're like, oh, I, I watch a lot of Twitch. Maybe I want to listen to a podcast. Well, guess what? We have a podcast too. We have an award-winning podcast, actually a multi-award winning podcast hey. uh, called Romancing the Dungeon. Uh, and if you like your D D games with a lot of heart and a little bit of silly, um, then you need to check out Romancing the Dungeon. And every second Friday, a brand new episode drops. Uh, the next episode is out Friday week, the 15th of November. And plenty of time to catch up on season one, season two, all the specials, uh, and then everything in between that. Uh, loads of time to do that in the next seven days um mm -hmm. we're going to be back here in two weeks time for the next episode of random dms um until then have a great great weekend we'll see you then thanks, thanks guys. Bye. bye, bye.